Let's turn now to politics. A new week and new questions for the White House. After extending an invitation to a brutal leader, Trump inviting Filipino President Rodrigo Duterte to Washington, an authoritarian accused of violent human rights abuses, including ordering the killing of drug suspects outside the legal system. Trump's chief of staff today defending the invitation on this week, citing the North Korea strategy. It comes as President Trump himself shared his thoughts on Kim Jong-un and the threat of a possible conflict. ABC's Bob Woodruff is in Seoul, South Korea. Tonight, an invitation from the White House for a world leader accused of human rights abuses. President Trump is inviting the Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte for a visit. Duterte faces international outrage over his ultra-violent and anti-drug campaign, but he's a potential ally in the region on North Korea. The Does that mean human rights doing... don't matter now? No, it doesn't. Does that mean you're not? Absolutely not. It doesn't mean that human rights don't matter. It, but what it does mean is that the issues facing us developing out of North Korea are so serious that we need cooperation at some level with as many partners in the area as we can get to make sure that we have our ducks in a row. The Hermit Kingdom continues to be a major international trouble spot. Just today, North Korea threatened the U.S. submarine that had visited South Korea. It will meet a miserable end and turn into an underwater ghost. At Trump's event in Harrisburg last night, ABC News asked if he plans to respond to Friday's missile launch. You'll soon find out, won't you? You're going to soon find out. Until now, the White House has drawn a distinction between missile launches and nuclear tests. If he does a nuclear test, I will not be happy. Today, Trump even expressed grudging admiration for Kim Jong-un. And at a very young age, he was able to assume power. A lot of people, I'm sure, tried to take that power away, whether it was his uncle or anybody else. And he was able to do it. So obviously, he's a pretty smart cookie. So how does the Philippines' controversial leader fit into all of this? We saw firsthand how he deals with suspected criminals in his country. His troops have killed more than 7,000 people since Duterte came to power. In the crowd, a worried mother. Soon she learns her son is gone. Oh, uh, no, that's your son. <laughs> Outwardly, it appears to be a deal with the devil. This is a person who has participated in extrajudicial killings of drug dealers and who thinks it's okay to kill journalists. Now, the Philippines spoke this weekend about the North Korean conflict, urging the U.S. to be prudent and patient, also saying that both the United States and North Korea are, quote, playing with toys. Tom? Bob Woodruff with the new developments from that region tonight.